Happy Independence Weekend, everybody. Today is July 3rd, 2021, and today I'm going to give you a tour of my vegetable garden. Hi, I'm Chris, and welcome to Gardening at the Simon Getty North. Here is my vegetable garden. It's changed a little bit since the last time you've seen it. Um, I'm starting to put up some fencing. I have some tomato cages up. I got a trellis, some other climbers going on here. So uh, why don't we go ahead and take a look and I'll show you what I got going on. So we're gonna start here with the, uh, the cruciferous family here. Up front here, right here, these are Brussels sprouts. Getting a little windy here. This is a Brussels sprout, and these are Brussels sprouts. And then this is a cabbage. <laughs> and this is my poor wilted cauliflower that I'm trying to nurse back to health. I guess if it doesn't come back, I can quickly put in another seed since it's a cool climate and I could have it go into October. These here, these are all beets. These are the Detroit red beets. This here is a different type of cauliflower. It's a hybrid. It's called a Fioretto. It has a unique succulent small florets. It's not like the flavor of a regular cauliflower. It's sweeter than the large head cauliflowers. That stays crunchy through cooking and it's good to eat fresh, grilled, sauteed, or used in stir fries. This plant also produces shoots for additional harvest. So I've never grown um, these before. Um, I have two of them here, right here and here. And you already can see here's a, an additional shoot coming up. And I started these from seed, uh, I wanna say in April. So now they're out here, they're actually doing really good. And then here's a celery. I've never grown celery before. It's a Utah celery. And I started that from seed. And then over here, you can't see it, it's very little. It's a direct sowed red cabbage because I, the one that I had planted didn't work out. So I quit, threw in another seed, but it's very, very dark. You can barely see it. So this here is my melon patch. Over here I have the cantaloupe. They're the gold star variety musk melon. Um, I have this one here and this one here. And then I have this plant is a passion flower that grows uh, maypop flowers that are actually edible. And I have this trellis that it's gonna grow up from um, Gardener's Supply. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in this trellis. Um, I'll get a better shot of it later. Um, but this, the Maypops, this is gonna grow up this vine and they're edible. I've never grown this before, so I'm kind of anxious to see how this works out. And this is a seedless watermelon that I have grown before. I grew it last year. They're kind of on the small side, which is good because we don't eat big watermelons. They end up going bad. So the grandkids really loved the watermelon, the cantaloupe and the watermelon from last year. So uh, they should be pretty happy. They're going, growing pretty good right now. Um, they were planted in the ground uh, Memorial weekend. So um, from the last video is when they got planted in the ground. Sorry, it's a little windy. So if you see me grabbing my hat, it's because it's about ready to fly off. <laughs> so. Um, all of this was planted Memorial Weekend, and it looks like they're doing really good. So I actually gave them some garden till this morning um, and gave them a good watering. Um, they haven't had any um, fertilizer food at all since I planted them, and so it's been a little bit now, so I thought they were ready and uh, gave them some garden till this morning. So let's go look at some of my tomatoes. So this one here is the cherry tomato which is an indeterminate um, tomato plant. And this is my grape tomato, which is also an indeterminate tomato plant. And this one here 
is the hybrid super sauce tomato plant, which is also an indeterminate plant. So the super sauce um, is a seed I got from Burpee. This is the world's largest sauce tomato weighing in at two pounds. It gets five feet, five inches tall and five inches wide. The super sauce produces gallons of sauce from a single harvest. One tomato fills an entire sauce jar and they're great for salads and burgers. So I've never grown this before either. I have two of them here. I got this one and this one. This one back here is a slicing tomato. So it's like a regular like seven ounce size round um, slicing tomato that I grew from seed. This is a determinant plant. So if you don't know the difference between determinant and indeterminant, an indeterminate plant means it's going to keep growing for an indetermined amount of time until the frost kills it or you top off the top or, um, and make it stop. A determinant has a set growth size. Like when it gets to the size that it's determined to get to, then it stops growing and then puts all of its energy into the tomatoes. All right, let's go check out my pepper section. So this here and here are the poblano peppers. This one is the giant sweet pepper, and that's what that one is. This one here and this one there are the uh, medium to hot um, peppers. And then just above, right in front here, is the basil. I have two spots where I have basil. And these are the sugar snap peas that are growing up this trellis here. Mustard greens here. They're a little young yet, but they are spicy. And I think they're spicier now um, as young they are. And they almost have a wasabi taste to it. You don't notice it at first, but it catches up with you. After a couple of them, it starts to get pretty warm. But they're very tasty. If you wanted to kick up your salad, these are great. I've never grown these before, so we'll keep an eye on how these are going. And uh, we'll see how they taste in... Um, as they get bigger but right now they're tasting pretty awesome these here are the snow peas that are growing up this vine here i think seven or eight pickle plants here that are growing up this vine here these here are pole beans and these are wax beans here this one's the spaghetti squash this one is butternut squash i had to replant that direct sow because the one I had started indoors broke off. I don't know if a rabbit broke it, one of the dogs. So if that's butternut, this is buttercup. So this is buttercup squash. So these here, these two tomato bushes are romas and they're also a determinant bush. These two tomatoes way back here are beefsteak tomatoes, which are an indeterminate bush. And they're getting pretty big already. I did put tomato tone on all the tomatoes this morning and gave them a good watering. Um, that was their first fertilizer food since they've been planted in the ground as well. Um, I didn't start this one from seed. I got it from our local greenhouse. Um, I wasn't planning on doing beefsteak, but I saw it, so I bought them. Here is a slicing cucumber that'll be growing up this tower here. Well, here basically is my pumpkin, corn, and dill patch with a few flowers, some nasturtium, whoa, and uh, marigolds. And there's my owl hoping to scare off the rabbits or anything else here until I can get my fence up and uh, 
my garden protected that way. So here is the, this is the Big Max pumpkin. The pumpkins can reach a hundred pounds or more. <laughs> the grandkids are going to love that. So we'll see if it, if I actually get some. Um, everything over here, I did put garden tone on it this morning and gave it a good water. Here is my corn. It's almost knee high by the 4th of July. I did start it, I started it, oh, the first weekend in June. So it is a little bit behind. And here's some dill. Let's see if you can see it. I have more dill too. And then here's my owl. It keeps going off because it senses me here. Here's the nasturtium. It did have a flower on it, but it's gone now. Here's another Big Max pumpkin. And oh, over here by the nasturtium, that other, this one here, this is the jack o' lantern size pumpkins. And I got two of those. Actually, I think I have three of those. And there's some more corn. And there's some dill. It's doing a little bit better than the other patch. I plan on putting bark through here, but I just haven't had time to do it yet. I actually have the bark. I just need to put it on in a few other places as well. There's strawberries over here, reaching for the sky. I have a cherry bush over here. The porch of my she shed is a mess right now because I'm still getting my gardening stuff out and then we're getting ready for renovation. And I have a whole bunch of boxes that I need to save to be able to pack up our mudroom entryway so they can take off that part of the house. So everything's got to be packed up and moved. Here I'll pan out and give you a good look at the garden. You can see I got the fencing starting to go up so they kind of know where they're going. This trellis here is going up at one of the entryways that I'm going to have a, a thornless rose bush climbing on, so stay tuned for that when that gets up. Update on the sweet potatoes. They're doing pretty good. They kind of don't look like they've done much since I planted them, but they actually got all new leaves. So we did have a couple nights where it was cold that I pretty much forgot that they were out here and the leaves kind of got discolored and stuff. So, but they all grew brand new leaves and it looks like they're getting better and stronger than they were before. So what'd you think of my vegetable garden tour? I think it's doing pretty good since I planted it Memorial weekend. And as some of the plants I planted the weekend after and I hadn't given them any fertilizer food since I planted them and today was their first day. So the next garden tour, they should be doing a lot better than they are right now. But take a look, I'm sitting in my moon garden I've added a couple new plants yesterday, and I'll be um, doing a tour soon on that. Please stay tuned for my next moon garden tour. I think you're going to enjoy it. Everything's starting to fill in. The vines are starting to grow up, and uh, it's looking pretty awesome. 
So stay tuned for that. I'm going to try to do it either this week, um, next week for sure. And uh, if you like my video, please smash the like button and leave me a comment below. I sure would love to hear from you and let me know what you thought about my vegetable garden and, and even what you think about my moon garden. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would be honored. If you really like my videos, please subscribe and become a Simon Getty subscriber today. And you can also hit the notification bell so it'll tell you when my next video comes out. Happy Independence Weekend and hope you have a safe, fun holiday weekend. Live, love, laugh, and garden. Hope to see you at the next video. Stay safe. Bye.